Hello everybody, welcome back to another FF14 video. I am your host, JSOS, and today we will be looking at my favorite ways to make guild without using gathering and crafting. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, the first one takes you about 30 seconds to do. It only requires you to have retainers and access to them. So what you're gonna do here is send them out on a venture. Ventures can yield anything from a dice all the way up to exceedingly rare minions. So we're gonna do an example here. Let's take Mining Botanist. She's already out in a venture. And when she is complete, you will have this uh, option called View Venture Report. If you press complete, you'll get elegant bronze piece plus Gridanian Sparkler. Now the Gridanian Sparkler is not much to look at, but the bronze piece can be vendored for money. Once you see that, you click reassign and you send them out on this case, level 40 Woodland Exploration. It takes about 18 hours to complete and you can have anything from dice all the way to the fat cat minion right there which is currently selling by 318k so it takes you about 30 seconds to set this up and you always get between let's say between 500 gil per all the way up to 300,000 Next up, we have hunting. Now, it requires a little bit of setup, but here's how it works. Each of the Shadowbringers areas has two rank A targets, which are especially strong monsters. Usually the community assembles something called a, a train, a hunting train. And once you go, you combat each of those in their respective areas. By the end of the hunt train, you will have killed 10 of those monsters. Now, well, why is that important? Because 10 of those monsters will yield 10 cracked stellar clusters and 10 cracked planet clusters. And this is the map that you need to trade for grade seven and grade eight combat materia. And you can get all of that in Yulmore. So let me show you. All right, here we are on Yulmore. And once we zone in and completely load, what we want to go is to talk to Tex, the materia vendor, which is located right here on where I'm heading. Once you get here, you pull up his uh, menu. And as you can see, Savage Aim Materia Grade 7 costs one cracked plenty cluster, and Grade Materia 8 costs one crack stellar cluster. Now there are several other ways to get the stellar cluster, but this would by far the easiest and cheapest and fastest. So you can use this to sell this material on the market board, which will net you a pretty penny, especially on high times where new raid gear comes out on the crafting tier, or you can use this to completely meld all of your uh, mains and alts without spending a gill. So you're whether you're making money or you're saving money with this method. Now the next method is trial farming. I will give you two examples so you understand what I'm talking about. The first example will be in Stormblood Trials. So if you go to the duty finder and pick the Stormblood Trials, which is or the Minstrel's Ballad, Tsukiyomi's Pain. If you pick this one and kill it, remember item level 350 and level 70, 70, you can do it in sync so the fights last about three, three and a half minutes to four minutes. You can get a crafting mat called, you will get this drop right here, Celestial Kimono Remnant. Now, without any crafting or gathering, you can net you. In this case, on my server right now, 1.8 million gil. This is the mat raw. 
no crafting necessary. Now for the second example, we're gonna use Emerald Weapon Extreme, which is called, if you go to the party finder here, let's see if we're lucky and have one. Probably not. Oh, we do. Castor Marinum Extreme. If you farm this one, and this is less rare, so we'll drop more often. Emerald rep weapon will drop her personal item, which is called Emerald Plating. If you win the roll and bring it back, just go to your retainers and pick the option sell items in your inventory on the market. Once you do that, shift over to your inventory and Emerald Plating will be 167k per I have four right now so if I put that price up 164 so like that it will be a stack of four would net me 656,000 of course you can spread this out and sell one individually so the crafters pick it up faster while we are close to a market board, let's discuss it in another way. Fragment farming. So if you are familiar with the new uh, relic instance called the Bajan Frontline, you know that by doing critical engagements plus skirmishes, it can drop fragments. And what they look like is something like this. I have a forgotten fragment of compassion. Now, if you farm that for a few hours, once uh, you get out, you will find out that you have more than a few of these. And these fragments are actually worth quite a bit of gill. So let's go to the market board and look at some of them. All right, so if you look at it, we have an entire list of forgotten fragments. The blue ones are from the Luru Regini, but let's just focus on the yellow ones that we can get by farming critical engagements and skirmishes which are the most easily accessed. So I'm gonna take you uh, a couple of examples. We got Forgotten Fragment of Superstition that is worth 4900 each. So a stack of three like you see here is worth 14k. Uh, sagacity here 12, uh, 12k each. So a stack of three is netting people 37,000 37, actually. And Fragment of Caprice as the last example is a lot cheaper but still uh, 1600 per a unit that's pretty good. I mean they're selling on stacks of two here and it's netting them 3300 gil. This one's more of a straightforward uh, way of making some cash also while completing your dailies as you reach level 80 you will have a plethora of roulettes expert level 80 dungeons 50 60 and 70 leveling trials main scenario alliance raids and normal raids this is basically what you can do every day so if you notice the adventure you need gives you a bonus but you can make around 50 no I mean, 50 is probably too much but i'm going to say 20,000 gil so if we follow after the daily roulettes you will get tombstones every time you complete a roulette which are the ones that if you go to your currency right here and the ones we're looking for right now is the tombstone of allegory and you can exchange these for mats. So first up, let's imagine that you have capped and you have 2,000 here. Let's go to Yulmore. Once in Yulmore, we will go to the NPC that you will be seeing in my screen here in a moment. A mark, the Tombstone Exchange. And you're gonna go to Elegant Tombstones of Allegory, Other. Once you press that, these mats right here these six top mats that takes about 20 tombstones per uh, per item is your big ticket item as you can see i already have spirit extract but i'm gonna grab 
Let's grab horsetail as well as an example. Eight of those. Okay, so we bought ourselves, oh, uh, very important to note that 2,000 of those tomes, a stack of 99. If I put 99 here, hold on. Oh, I can't because I have no cash. Okay, but a stack of 99 will net you, will cost you around 2,000 of tombstones of allegory. So once you acquire that, it's time to go to a market board. All right, once we're here, let's take note of the mats we have. Spirit Extract and Horsetail. So let's start with a Horsetail. Got a Horsetail right here. A stack of 99 of them at 1500 will net you 148,000. So what I'm saying here, is if you pick horsetail as the map that you want to sell a stack of 99 2000 tombstones tombstones i mean of allegory will net you 148,000. if we go with the other map that i have spirit extract oh let's just put spirit room there it is right here at the bottom this will be slightly more expensive <clears throat> as this is a mat that goes into uh, raid pots and a stack of 99 will net you at this uh, moment right now on my uh, on my server 181k per 2000 tombstones of allegory something to think about and it's something that you accumulate after several days of doing roulettes and dungeons and you can put that to good use by making some cash with it. And now still on the tombstones, how do we spend the poetics that accumulates real quick? So I will teach you one of the ways, my main way of getting rid of them poetics. So the first thing you need to do is go to Idleshire. Once you arrive here, what we want to do is head straight up to the poetics vendor in Idleshire and she is located where I'm taking you on screen right now it will be Ismena tombstone exchange if you go here and go to Allegan tombstones of poetics other you will be presented with the with this list now there are several there are several uh, uh, rare mats that they sell here. But what we're really looking for is this. The Demi Crystal. All right. What we're going to do is buy 80 of them, which you need exactly 2,000 for this. Once you got to the Demi Crystal in your hands, what you're going to do is head back to a market board. Actually, you don't need to go to a market board, which you can find, and you can find that in Idleshire, is a summoning bell, and bring out one of your retainers. Once you bring them out, sell items in your inventory on the market, and you're gonna shift over to your inventory, and grab the demi crystals. And put them up for sale for 340 each so a stack of 99 will net you as you can see here 39k so let's do that wait 340 a pop and we got 80 so a stack of 80 will net you about 27,000 so go ahead and confirm that might as well put this for sale 100 and the oysters that we got from the previous venture uh, high quality like I have them are netting me 2100 and there you go and this is where you spend your tombstones to sell mats 
Now one of the big ways you have to make gil without using any crafting or gathering is treasure map hunts. Something that happens at least once a day and you can also do the party finder yourself. So the first thing you need to do to be ready for this is already unlock the quest that happened in Evans Ward. Then you go to your market board, assuming that you don't gather, and you're gonna put Zenori skin. Oh, I mistyped that. <laughs> Let's do that again. Zunori skin. Yeah, that, that looks about right. Oh, alright. Zunori skin map. Okay, and this is the item you are looking for. A time-worn Zunori skin map. It sells for 66,000 right now but don't worry it looks a little steep but you will make that money and much more by going into a pool party of eight and doing at least two maps each so once you acquire the maps what you're gonna do is right click it or press square and you're gonna hit decipher when that happened it's going to go to your key uh, inventory and if you click it it will give you a location now if you're already on a group the party leader will ask the location of the map each and you will do this as a party this will net you several rewards and is the only way to get this map right here the calf leather which nets you this is just one of the many possibilities of mats in treasure hunting which one single one will net you 224,000 now you need three of those to make the leather jacket and that is currently 674,000 for three this is just one of the mats you uh, get materia if you finish one of them because it's kind of like random to see how many chambers you do you get a hundred thousand guild just for completing the dungeon plus many mats that you can use or sell to crafters to make mounts uh, pieces of glam you name it it drops on a treasure hunt make sure if you're gonna start doing treasure hunts do it at least once twice a week and you will make between 500,000 gil to 2.5 mil sometimes even more depends it depends on how good your runs are of course this is a little bit of an RNG but with eight people at two maps each you're gonna do 16 maps and I'll tell you that you're bound to at least hit the big time in one of those maps so this next method could be one of those that you call a longer method you can make tens of millions of guild as a possibility but it requires you to spend a great amount of time there so i'm going to give you the example so from here at the main to write in kagani we're going to go to the ethernet and select pier one once we load in we're going to go to uh, this guy called rodney expedition merryman Ferryman, I mean, not Merryman, that <laughs> Merryman. And then we're gonna go Journey to the Forbidden Land, Eureka Pyrus. You're gonna hit it. All right, once we are here, this is where we want to go. So you need to come right here where I am on the map. The coordinates are on screen right now and you wait. Okay, we're all mad here is uh, the fate you're looking for. Once that spawns, all you have to do is fight it. Once you finish this fate, or critical uh, com or elemental conflict as they call it, you'll get a several number of rewards. You get poetics and two pirates' lockboxes. But the most important thing is you get this little guy right here the happy bunny and he will indeed take you 
to a treasure. Now, if you go to your quest log and you hit the lucky carrot, it says far, far to the west. So let's find it. So, <clears throat> once we press the happy bunny for clues, he leads us to a treasure coffer. There is three grades. Bronze, silver, and gold. Gold being the one that has the possibility to net you one of those Elbert's uh, uh, horns, which is the big fiery uh, Yeti, which is worth a lot of money, and a hundred thousand in guilt. And the bronze coffer nets you ten thousand gil plus some material and low logograms. And this uh, particular fate spawns every ten to fifty minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So you're making about minimum ten uh, ten thousand gil uh, per run. And that is it guys, we reached the end of our video, how do you make gill without using crafting or gathering. I hope this one will help, and until the next one, peace out.